Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and Blender 5 Beta shipped last week and there is a ton of lovely new stuff in this release so that's what we're going to take a look at today. Some of the coolest new features like from the perspective of a game developer. So there was a bunch of improvements to the compositor and the video sequencer etc. I'm not going to cover those today, I'll cover that when Blender 5 releases later on. Today we're going to focus on things that are probably the most interesting to game developer and one of the things that game developers are most interested in are sacrificing default cubes. Goodbye, cube. All right, first thing we're going to do is come on up here. We're going to create a new mesh of type grid, like so. Uh, and then we're going to modify this grid so we've got a couple more things to deal with. All right, there we go. So, and let's let's scale it up. So this was, uh, say, a terrain in our world. We're going to come ahead here and we're going to sculpt this. So just kind of give it a little bit of... Uh, little bit of variety in the world, like so. Let's say you're working on a level editing tool, something like this. So here is your base level. So what is exciting and new about this? Well, what I'm gonna do is go back here to object mode. I'm going to go to modifiers and geometry nodes are coming of age. Basically, these are all being implemented as geometry nodes, but you wouldn't be able to tell it because they look like just normal modifiers. We got a bunch of new ones. This one is probably going to be one of the most interesting. What this basically does is scatters across a surface. This is something you do all the time time in level design. Let's say you were placing uh, a number of trees or foliage into your world, or well, you could do it this way. So let's say I modeled a tree. Let me just quickly model a tree, also known as a monkey. All right, there we go. So let's just move that up a little bit. There is our monkey. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Here is our thing with the modifier. You could go ahead and pick the object that you wish to instantiate on your world, and boom, it will do this. So you can obviously how you could have this uh, put trees or bushes or shrubs. You can actually have done it as a collection of items. So basically, I could create a collection of various different uh, tree types in our forest, and it will randomize and scatter them throughout the world. You also obviously have control over the density of how it is scattered like so, and you can also go ahead and randomize randomize all of these values throughout the world. So basically, um, you've got different uh, distribution methods there, but I could also come here, instancing, and go to transform, randomize right here, and then we can randomize the scale, for example, so it'll all be different sizes, or we can randomize the position, so it'll all be at different plots in the world. So you can obviously see how this could be super useful if you are doing level editing. On top of that, we've got a couple of other features here as well. We could actually mask this guy. So this is, um, I could create a new image mask right here. So let's do this, my, my mask, like so. So create a new image mask right there, and then we'll go on over to our image editor. So over here, image editor, we'll pick our mask. So there is my mask. And then what we can basically do is start drawing this as where we want things to be placed or scattered in our roles. Right now it is all black. So what I could do, let's come up over here, pick our color, let's make this white. And then we can basically start drawing black and white areas. So white is where it will instance and black is where it won't. So there you can see. So if I want to just do things on the corners, I can do them like that. Uh, let me just do it over here, make sure that this corner gets it as well. This corner there. So you can see you can use this uh, masking feature to show where things are done and not done. So for example, if you had a river section or something, you could easily mask it out and so on. Really cool capabilities. Now the neat thing here is that is not the only option. We've also got a brand new array tool that was created the same way. This time we're not going to sacrifice this poor cube. We'll use it as a demo instead. So once again, go back here to the modifiers. Add a modifier in, it is under generate, and you're going to see there's an array legacy, and now there is just array. So what we can do with array is a whole bunch of stuff, to be honest. It's just a new super-powered array creation tool. Here, so we can create the number of items in our array to create like so. So let's do, say, 10 items. You can determine how to create them. So here we could create them in circle and then change the radius of that array. Uh, all kinds of options there. You can also randomize the values within it, so we can randomly rotate them along a certain axis within our value there you see right there randomly rotating them around uh, and then you've also got the option you could use a curve so we can go ahead here let's add a curve into the world so let's do a curve of type path like so all right and now let's edit our path so this guy let's just move that over there this one we'll move this over here this one we will move over there and then this one we will move over here so there is our curve in the world uh, let's go back over to our cube like so we will select our curb, and now we're going to instantiate along that curve. Very cool stuff. Speaking of that curve, we could also do something very neat with it as well. So let me just go hide that guy. Uh, we can add a modifier onto this guy, and now we can do curves to um, tube. 
So if you're creating robes, et cetera, ropes, et cetera, in the world, you can create them this way. You got a lot of control over how individual things are done. So ropes, pipes, that kind of stuff used to be a lot trickier. Now you can easily do it basically just draw a curve and you can turn it into tubes like so. And you got control over the size of your tube over there. Got control over uh, how things are, are managed and created and so on. Uh, so we've got a number of new features there. Again, the interesting thing is these are all actually implemented as geometry nodes, but they don't feel like it. They're just, they just seem like normal uh, utilities. So that is a really cool new feature. Now, another new, new feature we've got in place, uh, and I love this one. So let's sacrifice another cube and let's bring in another monkey. Uh, where'd you go, monkey? Mesh. Monkey. All right, like so. Well, you'll notice if I go back up to the add section there, we also have add, uh, and then I can come up here, lattice, lattice deform selected. So we can create a lattice around our object. You'll see down here we have this lattice property there. Uh, we can actually set up how many sections in our lattice to have as control points, how they are interpolated, and so on. And then if I go into the edit mode and I select points of this lattice and move them, it is a standard lattice multiplier of uh, really cool stuff, very useful uh, for doing, um, you know, quick edits like this. Uh, it's also, I believe, non-destructive. So I could come back here and I could do modifiers on this and then the lattice will apply an update on them. Now we had a couple of other modifiers here, instance on elements and randomized instances as well. Uh, but we also have this one. So there was a bunch of improvements to uh, the, the uh, video editor and the compositor and all that. But we've also got this new uh, template storyboarding. So if you're doing any storyboarding work, you want a prototype, this is just going to make your world so much faster to work with. So we come down here, uh, we got, it's just a quick setup template that's using all this uh, new functionality that they've added in place. So if I want to do like a simple uh, world thing, so let's go here and pick up a brush. We can draw something in the world. We can move up our timeline a little bit, draw something there. And then we'll go up to our second shot in the sequence and I'll just do a drawing there and then if you come back here, go ahead and play it. You got your quick storyboarding here. It just makes it super simple. If you want to storyboard the, um, you know, you're ide doing ideation of what you're trying to create or visualize or prototype, there is this new quick template set up for doing it. So this new storyboarding functionality is building on top of other tooling that they've added, but a very cool new thing. Next up, we have one that I will admit is very niche, and this is actually only useful to game developers, but let's go ahead and check that one out. So what you've got here, we'll go to uh, texture painting for this object here. We're gonna go up here. Here, and we will make this a single image. We will create a new image. Let's start off as white as the background and then boom. So there is our new map, uh, my map. All right, there we go. So now we've got these new painting tools here. So you come down here to your painting options. And what you'll find is there are now two for pixel art, erase and paint. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go over to the image editor like so. Let's go into paint mode like so. So again, Pixel art, we have these two new options available here. So you're gonna see uh, that is way too big. So let's go over here. So we want it to be more like say 17 pixels and we'll go ahead and draw it. And then what you're gonna see is if I go pick a color for it. All right, pixel art, boom. Oh, let me pick my mask, duh. All right, my map over here. All right, so here you can see in our mode, and there you see the results. Now, the big thing you're gonna notice here is it's chunky. So if you wanna get that pixel art look, you can basically draw it down and you can actually go down to a single pixel and draw one pixel at a time. So if you're trying to get that retros 8, 16, or even 32 bit style from before, that is what this mode is all about. Apparently it works better in 2D mode than over in 3D mode. Uh, I've had some issues in 3D, uh, but it does seem to definitely be improving. So there is this new pixel brush. There's also this one right here, uh, which does an erase. This actually erases the alpha. So you're gonna notice here, if I erase, it literally uh, is just getting rid of everything. But then if I go back to pixel art mode like over here and I paint within that area, it draws it back in. So but basically the idea behind this is it is an individual pixel painting. There's no aliasing going on here, no nothing else, uh, literally. And again, it's more obvious when you're looking at like a, say a three by three pixel brush and you paint it in the world, they're literally pixel chunks. So if you want to get that pixel art look and you want to paint it directly inside of Blender, that functionality 
is now available. Now let's go on back a little bit over to the geometry notes. I'm gonna mostly just show you that this exists because I got two things I'm gonna show you in the release notes section. So here, let's go ahead and open up geography, um, geometry notes editor like so. All right, here we go. So let's create our new geometry node and we've got a couple of neat new options. The first one here is available. They're both in the utility section. It is this guy right here here. So it's a bundle. So you can create a combine bundle. And this is basically, you can think of if you're a programmer, this is like a structure. So what I can do is I could basically just add raw inputs into it. So here, let's say input, and we're going to add in say a Boolean value like so, uh, color. All right, there we go. So you can add in a bunch of stuff here. And this basically becomes a data type. This is a data type that has a Boolean and a color in it. And so what happens if you want to go and use these values? Well, that is where the other new node comes in. And that is this guy right here. So we got evaluate, oh, sorry, what is it? Bundle, separate, all right here, boom. So you can see it splits it out. And then you've got all of your core components. By the way, if you had multiple uh, of these bundles, you could actually add in another one via the join bundle uh, option that was available. So you, you got some really cool functions here. Basically, this gives you the ability to create compound data types that can be used in your geometry node. Now we got another new capability here as well. And this one is this right here, again, in utilities, and it is closures. So we got new closure, like this, this you can think of like a function. Everything between here and here evaluates. You can pass in different values to it. So you've got control over the inputs to this closure here. But you can think of this as a black box of reusable code that can be handled. So how do you actually handle it? Well, your closure can come out and then there is evaluate closure like this that can then be spiked in. And a closure is not only this, it is also a data type. So you could set up new nodes that take a closure as an input. So you could have uh, multiple different ways of handling, say, um, setting up your scene world as an input and then you could switch out the closure and pass that closure in as a parameter to any value. So it gives you a way of creating modular code inside of Blender geometry nodes. Oh, also in shader nodes at this point in time. So we have another very cool feature here that is going to be polarizing because it's going to break backward compatibility of blend files. The blend file has been updated at the core level and they've added three new features to it. First off, uh, data blocks can now be up to 255 bytes in length. The previous limitation was 63. Um, you also have new packed data support and how that is handled there. And then probably this big one here, is the large buffer support. So this is going to make it possible to have huge meshes. So meshes with more than a few hundred million vertices are going to be supported here. Now the check, the kicker here is going to be Blender 4.5 LTS is going to be able to load these files. Older versions are not going to be able to. And when it even comes to the packed data, uh, 4.5 TS LTS will be able to open it, but it will be converted to plain regular local data in 4.5. But this is going to enable uh, much larger worlds and scenes and data files inside of Blender. It also gives you the ability to give those blocks larger names. Again, this isn't backward compatible past 4.5. Definitely one of those things you need to be aware of. So if you want to learn more, there is an article on basically bundles and closures uh, and the goals behind them. But basically, you can think of bundles as structs and closures as functions. It's going to give people the ability to create cleaner, more capable node-based code. And it's turning geometry nodes, I should not call them geometry nodes, Blender nodes into a full-blown programming language. So if you're interested, there's a lot more to this release. It's in beta until November the 5th is what they're saying. So that could move back, whatever. But when we hit that November the 5th release, I'll, I'll get into more broad. I'll talk about the, the other changes we've got here, such as the, the video sequencer uh, and the nonlinear editor stuff. A lot of improvements in that area as well. Same with the compositor and so on. This time I focused on more of interest to game developer stuff. And there's a lot in Blender 5. If you're interested in checking it out, it's available. Just head on over to the downloads page of Blender. And then what you want to do is scroll on down to go experimental, download Blender experimental, and then get the appropriate version for your operating system. As you can see, it's available for all the various different versions. There is a, a beta available. By the way, it was updated. Uh, the one I downloaded originally of the beta, uh, the pixel art painting brush did not work. So I grabbed the newest version. So they are releasing updated versions of the beta, even though the beta came out a few days ago, there have been some improvements. So make sure you grab the newest version when you go ahead and check it out. So this is from the daily build. So ladies and gentlemen, that is Blender 5 currently in beta. Some of the awesome new features. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.